Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we're going to rip through it because much of the ecosystem has been taking time to participate in the Bevy Game Jam in one way or another. And by the time you're reading or watching this, Bevy Game Jam 5 will have closed for submissions and voting will have started. So go check out the Bevy Game Jam webpage on itch.io. Hopefully you got your submission in and go play and vote on some of the great games. In the meantime, the Next Generation Scene slash UI Working Group is kicking off with an almost 8,000 word proposal and a suitably large ensuing discussion in Discord. Of course, as you can see from the scroll bar, the discussion is not limited to Discord as some is also on the GitHub issue. The overall proposal proposes to embrace the bevy data model for both scenes and UI, and then fill in functionality and UX gaps where necessary. This is again, just a proposal. So if you're interested, give it a read and catch up on what's already been discussed. The working group can be found in the Bevy Discord under Working Groups in the Next Generation Scene UI thread. Following on that proposal, Alice wrote a vision for Bevy UI, which kicked off even more discussion centering around the question, what should Bevy UI be? This spawned a lot of great discussion, which is accessible in, again, a Discord thread in the UI dev channel this time. If you go check it out, don't forget to check out the pinned posts for this one, which include wonderful dives into incrementalization and reactivity design choices, both by Dreamer Tallinn, the author of Quill. Moving on from scenes and UIs, the meshless tracking issue got a rewrite this week to better align with what the actual plan is, including what's left before the next big PR and the major goals after that. And Flag Frenzy is a new in-house tool built to automatically test the growing combinations of bevy feature flags. It has already caught four bugs, including the latest two, this one, fix bevy when it not building with the serialized feature, and this one, fix bevy GLTF PBR features, not enabling corresponding bevy PBR flags. Manually checking all of the combinations of different feature flags gets to be a hairy problem and is something best left to the robots. So it's awesome to see this work being done. And we got some transform propagation optimizations this week, both with measured work improvements, as you can see here, as well as a reduction in unnecessary work as Bevy now filters out entities that don't have a global transform when propagating transform information. And nice UX improvements are always nice. In 14.441, run conditions got simpler, or at least some of them did. Now you no longer need to call them as functions yourself. Here you can see the before, which requires function calls, and the after, which does not. And query iter many allows the iteration of a query filtered by a list of entities. In 14.128, Double-ended iterator was implemented for the resulting iterator, allowing access from the back. And finally, if you were using OKLCHA OK or LCHA, there were some subtle bugs in the mixing of hues, resulting in not quite right combinations. 14468 fixes this. This was a fix driven by game jam usage. So one more vote in favor of the game jams that happen every two releases. And starting off our showcases, you may be familiar with this little duck, which in this case is the first steps in a bevy game jam entry that kicked off with the bevy quick start template. Next up, we've got a space sandbox, which added cylindrical movements shared to honor the bevy jam theme without directly participating in it. And I love little tools like this. Bevy and its gizmos are great for creating them for debugging and for validating. This demo shows off one small tool for displaying clamped and derived bounds. And this next demo shows off what a little tone mapping bloom and an environment map can do for you. In this case, they switch from the default, which you can see here, to an ACES workflow, which you can see here. Later, they went even further with temporal anti-aliasing and screen space ambient occlusion. Next up, we've got some sign distance fields. These are Lizaju curves. I think that's how you pronounce it. Rendered via sign distance fields on the GPU. I'm a huge fan of these. They're super fun to work with. Sign distance fields, that is. So I'm very excited to see anybody working with them. And next up, we've got some proof that gizmos might actually be the best rendering technology. Why have volumetric fog, god rays, or reflections when you can have gizmos? This demo nicely shows how you can use Bevy's built-in gizmos to render something that actually has a quite nice aesthetic to it. And next up, we've got a really aesthetic shrine that activates at night with fireflies floating around them. I really love the look of this, and I'm looking forward to see what they do with this in the future. And of course, the Bevy Game Jam isn't the only game jam that's been going on lately. Provost Report was created for the 48-hour IGDC Game Jam and features procedural levels using TransVoxel RS, bloom and fog effects that run in the browser, and music and sound effects using Bevy Kira Audio. Provost Report has a YouTube trailer, and you can play it in your browser. And from 3D to 2D, this is a prototype for a 2D game. 
complete with character sprites, level design, and even icons. Ethersha is a sandbox voxel game that is upgraded to Bevy 0.14. What this means is they're using SSR liquid reflection, volumetric fog, and new lighting support. This has been in development a while, so it's nice to see them improve over time. And we've talked about it a little bit in our last issues, but Cloud Cafe is a VR desktop environment, a shell, and a replacement for the Windows environment for VR. The goal is to provide an experience where any user can plug in their Quest 2 or Quest 3 into a laptop or PC and have the Windows show up as individual entities to be manipulated on a spherical plane. It's aiming for a very high level of polish and low friction, seamless interaction. Taking off the headset should immediately return the Windows to their original locations on the computer monitor and putting it back on should re-engage Cloud Cafe. By working over the wire and doing the rendering on a mobile VR headset, one should be able to take any Windows laptop to a coffee shop plug the headset in, and immediately start work on the equivalent of a 2K monitor resolution with any number of individual screens. The screens are gnomically projected, maintaining their shape and size, giving the appearance of flat windows that are seamlessly moved around a spherical shell. And a custom taskbar and search menu are built to be faster and potentially better than the Windows version. This there and back again jam menu has at least two interesting facts about it. One is the main menu text that is formed from particles that you just saw, and the second is the nav mesh implementation from a navigator crate applied to the 3D pathfinding present in the menu's graphics that you can see here. In this case, of course, it's just a straight line back and forth, but as the week progressed, some more demos were shown with more complicated use cases. Elevated Arcana is a new game that's been in progress since December and just got its alpha release. There are test builds for iOS and Android with desktop expected to follow. You can view the trailer, which you're seeing here on YouTube. And what would a Game Jam week be without ad hoc level editors? This Bevy Game Jam 5 submission is using a sprite, an animated sprite and pixel editor as a level editor. And finally, for our showcases, we've got Polygon Generation via Straight Skeletons, which shows off work in progress straight skeleton implementation for the generation of polygons. And with that, we're into our crates. This crate, GHX Constrained Delone Triangles, is a fast Rust library for 2D constrained Delaunay triangulation. The examples and demos come with a visual bevy debugger to observe the process. You can see some of the results here, and if you click on this YouTube link, you can see the full Bad Apple video in triangles. Spirit Editor v14.2 also got released this week. Spirit Editor is an open source 3D world editor that's been in development and usage in an RPG for a few months now. So if you're looking for an editor, this might be the one for you. And Bevy Mod BB Code is a straightforward crate that adds rich text support to Bevy using the BB Code markup flavor. Now, I do believe that the actual functionality implemented by this is already supported by Bevy UI's text. So this is effectively a layer over it that interprets BB Code and renders Bevy UI text. And from text to 2D lighting, inspired by Bevy Light 2D and Bevy Magic Light 2D, this new 2D lighting crate focuses on usability and ergonomics and has support for light occluders. I'm honestly really excited about all the 2D lighting options we're getting in the Bevy ecosystem, so it may be time for a rundown video. Landmass and Bevy Landmass are navigation systems focusing on pathfinding and local collision avoidance. This update includes 2D navigation, which previously was just 3D, ad hoc navigation queries, node types with different costs for pathfinding, and agents can have a different desired speed from their max speed. Moonshine Tag got its first release, which is cheap, fast, and mostly unique identifiers designed for Bevy. Honestly, I feel like many of the IDs we use every day are mostly unique, including UUIDs, <laughs> which have a very small but very possible chance of collision. And Moonshire Check is a validation and recovery solution for Bevy. This allows you to run checks against queries for entities and action the results. Speaking of Bevy landmass, Landmass Oxidized Navigation also got a release this week, which is a brand new crate using oxidized navigation to feed into Bevy Landmass. Previously, it was up to the user to create navigation meshes for Bevy Landmass, and now with oxidized navigation, you just put colliders into your world and navigation meshes will automatically be created for Bevy Landmass. And finally, we've seen Quill in a couple of different demos over the last few weeks and seen a number of great write-ups on incrementalization, reactivity, and more. Bevy Quill 0.1.3 got released, which contains a number of simplifications and performance improvements, including the use of component hooks for cleanup. So if you want to tear down a UI, you can just despawn the view root entity and all cleanup should happen automatically. 
And finally, we've got Bevy Blendy Cameras, a crate for Bevy camera controls for editors or 3D views of a desktop app inspired by the Blender camera controls. Pan orbit zoom, fly, set viewpoint, frame entities into view, and even eGUI support. This crate was inspired by Bevy pan orbit camera. Given the other UI work the maintainers have been working on this week, it's not surprising that Alice spent a day using Bevy UI from a user's perspective instead of a maintainer's perspective. This Mastodon thread includes Alice's thoughts, which she TLDRs as solid fundamentals, needs widgets, text handling is bad, and Bevy mod picking is great. I know that text handling specifically has already gotten some PRs that are going into 0.15 involving cosmic text, so look to see that improved soon. And finally, we got a Sickle UI devlog, which is a check-in with the Sickle UI crate after the author came back from vacation. And that's it this week. As always, we've got all of the PRs that were merged in, the issues that were opened, and the PRs that were opened. And I'm going to go try to finish up my Bevy Game Jam game and get it submitted. So I will see you next week, when hopefully we have a bunch of votes in for the Bevy Game Jam. Have a great rest of your week.